Move 2018, uh, Matthew from ALM, how's it going? Pretty uh, tired. <laughs> <laughs> you were with Dave Free at this point. Got a little bit of voice left. Just, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, well before that goes, a uh, new sampler we should look at first. Yeah, yeah. so I've got uh, four new modules uh, uh, with me here, all in a kind of prototype stage. Uh, sampler, uh, 6HP, wavetable, uh, oscillator, a five stage function generator and a little tiny 2 HP um, headphone output. And I think first I'm going to go through the sampler, um, which is still quite sort of early days. Um, eight channels, uh, four outputs, just take using the mix output at the moment. Um, uh, meant to be very kind of like quick to use, PAM style UI, um, uh, as w uh, USB uh, read write, um, sample input here, um, 8 megabytes of memory internal at the moment, uh, samples at uh, 44, 1 kilohertz um, at 16 bit. Um, right, and I've got, a, some, I've got a bank of samples loaded. Um, if I trigger off number six, gives me a little break which I can speed up and slow down I can get that loop in I can reverse it I can drop the quality right down to like 4 bit back up to 16 I can lower the sample rate there it is at 4 kilohertz bring it back up. it's nice to see sample rate on there yeah and then you've got a if it was like a one hit, I can add like a decay style envelope. I can change the envelope, the start, end, and loop points, that kind of thing. Um, on number seven, I've got a little nice little string. These last three channels all have dedicated voltage for octave input, so little little sub sample there I'm playing around with. Um, also, it can. Um, sample itself it can obviously sample I'm just gonna stop this oh. uh, so what I've got here it is the input it's got like euro and line level inputs I've got it patched into a dinky over there well I've actually got it patched into a Haswell um, so it's going in it sends it's got a tr it's got a dedicated trigger output so I press the sample button and then it sampled it it's that easy I sort of designed it to be um, very quick and easy to use it figures out endpoints that kind of thing although that hasn't um, it's still a bit rough like this is gonna change it's kind of like 60 70 percent there but it's gonna it's gonna change it's gonna revolve a little bit yeah, um, I can appreciate it's a prototype yeah 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 it's got um, assignable CV inputs as well just like on the PAM um, and you'll be able to assign them to anything but it may uh, grow another one or two extra um, and the UI is very sort of, it'll be very sort of simple and similar to PAM, but rather than outputs, you'll go through these channels. Um, uh, what else is that? So yeah, also you can, it's, it's triggerable or gateable to, to set it sampling. If you send it a gate and hold the gate down, it keeps sampling and looping it around and then you can put a trigger in there to move through. So you can use it to do like odd effects, like a weird sample and hold or even patch it up to be like a delay with uh, multiple taps coming out. Okay, wow. Yeah, so I want it, I want it to be um, kind of have a PAM-like UI, so it's very quick to use, but rather than going down a level, you just access these things with the buttons. Um, and it to be sort of very patchable and very fun, you know, more like a sort of old school kind of sampler rather than uh, something sort of super high res, you know, that kind of thing with waveform, edit waveform editing and that kind of thing. It, I want it to be very sort of immediate and fun. Yeah, that kind quick of thing. and playable. Yeah, yeah. So um, what I'm going to do quickly is I'm just going to load in a different bank ready for, so I can demo it with the, um, oh, except it's a bit ropey. At the moment, a little bit rough around the edges. Certain things aren't. This this uh, encoder is dying, unfortunately. But it is a. Uh, I'm surprised. It's, it's I'm surprised had, it's lasted. It's had some uh, event abuse, I think. Yeah. It's still, it's still hanging on. Just about there. It's just going to load me in a new bank, and then all this. That should be a 909 bank. I've got all triggers coming from the BeatStep Pro here. And then, right, so that's all set up. 
Uh, I'll sequence that in a minute with this with uh, when demoing these two. Um, right, so this is a 6 HP wavetable um, VCO. I'm just going to unpatch that. And then the I'll smallest wavetable VCO in the format. Or, uh, maybe. Well, if it, it, maybe maybe not. I maybe don't know all of them, but yeah, I'm sure there's one smaller probably. I'm just going to patch it. It's small and still playable. It looks like yeah. small comparatively. No, why we're not. So there's a sign coming out at the moment, quite a loud sign. I'll take that down, but it sweeps from noise through to like your standard waveforms. Then you've got like a triangle and a saw there. Um, then it goes into some more interesting a bell like tone, um, an organy tone, a four manty tone, which I always like, and then a square wave. You also get a nice uh, sub output. And then the kind of interesting thing this little trick it does is it gives you a um, alpha, it does where well, basically does alpha Juno style um, pulse width modulation. So it'll take any it'll take any of the waveforms that you uh, any waveform that you selected and then it'll pulse wave modulate it. But it doesn't have to be a square wave, so you get like the real kind of like Hoovery Juno sounds of like. I can do that with any. It's really thick. Yeah. And then there's another input so you can uh, kind of add even more of that if you want, in terms of there being more pulses, if you like. Um, uh, what else? Is there? You've got a uh, voice control of, of them bits, and it's also got a sync input. And yeah, that's about it. It's also pretty shallow, skiff friendly. Um, it's going to be not sure on the final price, but it'll be very sort of affordable. It's designed yeah, to be a nice yeah. kind of like little extra VCO for your live case or whatever, you know. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm just going to patch it back into there. I don't know why that's coming out, but we will. Right. Uh, next up is the Quaid Mega Slope. Um, this is a five channel function generator. Each channel has a level uh, control and a time control which uh, dictates how long in the function that it generates it takes to get to the particular level. And then you've got a slope control for each stage as well which goes from exponential to linear to logarithmic. You can also set the amount of stages down here. Um, you've got a, a unipolar and bipolar output and then you've got end of stage and end of cycle triggers. You've also got voltage control over every stage's level and time. It works in uh, three different modes. You've got like an envelope mode where it works like a classic kind of like multiple stage envelope. Um, and you can define which which stage is the um, sustain or you, you, and you can do things like set the level to zero up the time and then it becomes like a delayed you know envelope like hold at the start yeah, yeah 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 and you can you know copy other kind of like envelope styles pretty easily um, and then it also has a loop mode where it becomes effectively a, a, a um, an LFO where you can define uh, the waveform that comes out of it basically if I set it looping here we go that one's see it going there and then finally it has a step mode a step mode where it becomes a little step sequencer which is kind of my favorite thing it does. I'll just put it in that. And if I turn all the times down and I start it, so now you can see it's working like a regular step sequencer. We got, but then if you start adding the time, each becomes like a, uh, a controllable slew, a separate slew. Hear the line and changing them. Nice like little wonkiness, which works really nice once you. Then the drums are coming through from the sample there, but we're not sounding great. And then finally, the most exciting module of all of the whole event. The whole event. Um, the 2HB headphone output. Super useful though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so, I made this originally just for myself for the, to use at the shows. Um, 
but people really liked it, so I've 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 banged it out. It's super simple. Um, just you know, sounds nice. No great claims about the quality, but it's it's um, it's it's a clean, nice, clean output. Uh, it's 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 still skiff friendly though. It's two HP. Um, and you can batch a mona, get a stereo signal in, or put a stereo in it, or give it a stereo out and a little level control. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So are these kind of all for later in the year, all being prototypes? Uh, well, the HBO is imminent, that should be next month. Um, the the Mega Slope and the VCO, I don't know, yeah, they're, they're a few months away. Um, and then the sampler is, is end of the year, basically. That's what I'm aiming for. I've still got quite a bit of work to do there, but it's it, I'm aiming for end of the year. With that in mind, any rough prices? I'm not quite uh, sure yet. Um, well, I want to keep them all uh, reasonable and affordable, I'd say, at the moment. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to get the, the, the sampler sort of under uh, under sort of 500 euros if I can. That's my aim, you know. Okay. All right, great. Well, thank you. Cool. Thank you. Oh, do you want me to say about the grey panels? We should talk about the yeah, grey panels. Yeah, because yeah, I was. So, uh, the grey panels are just done as like an experiment for the show. I just, you know, just uh, a bit of fun. And they sort of went a lot better than I expected. And I had a lot of interest around them. But I don't want to, I don't want to switch everything to that because it will just be like a massive pain it's a nightmare for shops to yeah, stock yeah, both yeah, yeah, and you yeah, to yeah, provide. Yeah, so the plan is that the, the plan for the moment is um, maybe like a special edition Pam, like a short run or something. But probably what will happen most likely is maybe a complete system at some point in this in this colorway. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's what people seem most interested in. Yeah. And what about knobs as well? Oh yeah, yeah. And using that knob colorway, you know. I also think that if you took one of these and put it in another system, it would look pretty awful. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, they look great together, but you know. <laughs> Right, great. Okay.